So good afternoon, everybody. We're joined today by Fred from the AIM Group, um, who's going to do us a fantastic session today on interview skills. Um, just to let you know that this um, session will be recorded and we will be sharing it on our website after half term, so you've got this as a resource. Um, if you've got any questions, you can pop it in the chat, but Fred will also be um, sharing her contact details at the end of this presentation, so that if you have got any questions, you can also pose those directly as part of this recording as well. So I'm just going to put myself in the background for now and I'm going to hand over to Fred. Lovely, thank you so much and good afternoon everyone. Uh, so again, my name is Fred and I'm here from the AIM group, but I'm also part uh, of the National Apprenticeship Service and today we're going to be talking about interview skills. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat or I will um, share some information as Miss said uh, at the end. So you're more than welcome. If you are watching this on, on um, sort of playback, then um, yes, you're more than welcome to get in touch if you have any questions. OK, so I'm going to share my screen with you now. Yes, we can see that, Fred. Is it in presentation mode? Sorry, bear with me. Here we go. OK, so this is on presentation mode. Uh, perfect. So as I said, I'm here on behalf of the National Apprenticeship Service and today we're going to talk about interview skills. So earlier today we looked at application uh, and some of the things that we looked at in the application we can also use during that interview. Um, so these are some of the things we're going to be covering in this session. So we're going to talk a little bit about an introduction to interviews, what to do in order to prepare, um, some interview questions, some answers and responses potentially. Uh, we were going to do an activity but we'll see how we go with that one and some more hints and tips. OK, so going straight on to what is an interview. So an interview is part of the recruitment process. It's usually the last stage of the recruitment process. Um, so this is a, uh, a type of assessment um, for the employer to see whether you are suitable for that particular role. So when you apply for a job or an apprenticeship, you do an application and then if you're successful, you um, may need to do some assessments. And of course, you get potentially called for an interview if you are successful at the end. So the interview, as I said, is sort of like the, the last stage. Now, you may have to do um, more than one interview. So you may have to do an initial for an interview and potentially do a face to face interview or a virtual interview. Now, an interview, as I said, is a part um, an assessment. So um, is to see um, for employers is a, a way to assess whether you are a suitable candidate um, to fill that role that they're looking for. It's um, it's a process which um, employers use quite a lot um, and it's probably the best way to assess whether you're suitable or not. Um, there are questions which will be asked. So generally speaking, an interview, if we're talking about the face to face um, sort of traditional part, sort of traditional interview, what will happen is you will attend, uh, you go to a building, there will be an employer that you need to see. You will have a one to one where um, they will ask you questions about yourself. What skills do you have which will fill that role? OK, and it will be a really good chance for you to talk about what skills you have and provide examples to back up your answers. So again, we had a look a little bit at that earlier when it came to applications. So think about those specific keywords that will make you stand out. Um, so keywords such as, for example, confidence. So if you have particular confidence, you can say I'm very confident because um, I am able to speak in front of a large audience. This is just an example. So try to come up with some examples which will then um, make you stand out a little bit more. So just as you did in your application, you will do that in your interview. OK, so the employer will ask you some questions. They will then talk about the role, what is involved in that particular role and how you would fit in in that particular role. OK, um, and then um, you will then have the opportunity to ask some of those questions to the employer. OK, so it's very important that you do ask some questions at the end um, to show that you are interested in the role, but also to show that you are listening and to see whether the role and the 
job as well, whether it is suitable for you. Now, the interview is not just about the employer knowing that you are the suitable person for that particular role. It's also important to see for you whether this could be a good uh, fit for you, because don't forget, you're going to be doing that every day. So you want to make sure that you are feeling confident and happy to be working for uh, that particular employer. Don't want to go um, and start a job which then you're going to hate and you're not going to enjoy and then you're going to drop out of way through. You want to do something that you're going to enjoy. So the interview stage is a great opportunity, not only for you to see what if to, to feel what it's like, a bit like an open day of college. You go there and you get to feel the atmosphere, but also to ask those particular questions, which will then make up your mind whether it could be the suitable job for you. OK, so it's really um, about see whether you fit in, but also how the job will fit in with your life too so it's a great opportunity to find all of that out um so that's really what an interview is um it can be very nerve-wracking um some people get very nervous and that's absolutely normal okay i just want you to to know that i have been on both sides both the interviewer and the interviewee um and i can tell you that being the interviewer is just as scary as being interviewed okay so don't worry be yourself um feel comfortable uh, as much as you can okay and answer all the questions as honestly but as i said i'm gonna take you through a few tips on how to really help you with that interview the best advice i can give you is that with interviews the more you do the more interviews you do uh, the more confident you will feel okay so it's something that as you build upon and you do more and more and more you'll end up being better at you'll be able to sell yourself um, a lot better um, with time as time goes on okay so don't feel nervous <laughs> to begin with okay so sorry it's not skipping through the next bit there we go okay so there are different types of interviews okay so there's lots of different uh types of interviews the traditional one the typical one the one that we all know is the usual one-to-one -one. so as i said to you the, the one that you go into an office and you will sit down with uh, the hr person or you know the employer and you will have one-to-one -one questions um so back and forth conversation okay um there are also panel interviews which are really um great panel interviews you will actually have a couple of people interviewing you rather than just one person it could be uh, people from different departments um joining in and um sort of asking you different questions from their side okay so you may get um, a question from each individual um so that's also another way to also get to know the rest of the team and to see how you fit in so as i said it's not just about the employer seeing how you fit in with the rest of the team but it's also to see whether you would fit in whether you would feel comfortable in working in that kind of environment okay um so panel interview is quite popular as well at the moment, because of the COVID situation, you will find that a lot of them can be online. Uh, so it could be uh, through a video like we are doing today, for example. So it could be a team or a Zoom meeting or it can be a telephone call interview. Now, telephone call interviews tend to be the initial stage interview, which is always followed up with a face-to-face -face interview. Employers do prefer to see you now, whether that's face-to-face -face or virtual. That depends on the situation. However, they do like to see you. Um, again, I'm going to give you a few tips about video interview because what you want to do is really avoid doing these types of interviews using telephone like this gentleman is doing in the picture because you will end up sort of shaking the phone a bit too much, which you don't want to do. So if you could use a computer or laptop, or at least rest your phone somewhere steady, that would be better than just holding it um, as this gent is doing in the picture. I wouldn't recommend it. Now, of course, um, you have a date and time which is set for your interview, so you need to make sure that you are there in plenty of time. Um, you know, you will work out all the logistics beforehand. Um, make sure that you're there early, never late. And if you are running late because of an accident or road traffic or whatever it is, make sure that you call the person to let them know that you're running late. OK, um, as I said, it is part of a larger process in the sense of recruitment um, because there's lots of different stages when it comes to recruitment and interview is just part of it. OK, so again, the recruitment process works as we looked at earlier, you have your registration, then you search for that particular job. 
OK, you then apply with the CV or your application. And then if you're successful, you get shortlisted. You may have to do some assessments and then you go on to do an interview. OK, so some people will skip the assessment part and go straight on to the interview process. So that's kind of one of the um, the application and the interview um, the crucial parts of the recruitment process. OK, so. No matter how many stages you have in your recruitment, you could be doing three different assessments and, you know, several different applications, but you still have to do the interview at the end. OK, and if you are successful, you will then be offered the job. So now some tips about how to ace a video interview. Now, I hope um, and Miss, please help me if, um, if you can't hear it. I'm not sure how to fix the sound. If it doesn't work, let me know. OK, OK, so no problem at all, Fred. I'm going to play that now, see if it works. Can you hear it? I'm afraid we can't, Fred. Right, OK. How would you know how to? I know that there's a setting, so this is where my IT skills are not great. <laughs> Uh, it flashes up at the, up at the top, top in, in a box, box. And, and you, you have, have to, to click, click, click that. When, when you first, first, put, first share, share the screen. When I first share the screen, yeah, yeah a box, box comes, comes up, up at the top, top where you can click, click um, for the sound. sound. Is it here? I, I was thinking... I was thinking you might have you to might stop have sharing, stop and sharing, share it again, and then share and then it again. A, an oblong box, and then box comes up at the box top. That, a, an oblong box box comes up at the, the top. Okay, so if I stop sharing, bear with me, guys. Sorry. <laughs> right. You feel free to ask some questions as I'm trying to work this out. <laughs> um. So if I share again. Okay. So it just asks me include computer sound. Genius. There we go. There we go. Thank you. Sorry about that. OK, right. Let's do this again very quickly. I'll skip through all of these. There we go. OK, so hopefully this time it will work. Fingers crossed. <laughs> there we are. Is that OK? It is. Hi. Hi, and welcome to an introduction of HireVue. I'm Matt, and I'm here to give you a few pointers today. First of all, we do realize that a video interview may not be the most comfortable thing for some of you. But using video interviews as part of our application process has allowed us to consider a lot more applicants for each position. Next, you'll need a laptop or a desktop with a camera. We know that it can be difficult to act like yourself in front of the camera, so don't worry, we're not evaluating your stage presence, although a little personality can go a long way. <clears throat> I work real hard and I'm smart too. Maybe I should emphasize, a little personality goes a long way. But make yourself at home, get comfortable, shouldn't be too hard because most likely you're at home already. And please don't feel like you have to make eye contact with the camera the entire time. I know that you're supposed to make eye contact with your interviewer, but in this case, not breaking eye contact with the webcam, it just makes things a little weird. Uh, Feel free to let your eyeballs breathe and check your notes if you need to. Also, make sure you go through the practice questions ahead of time so that you can know what the process will feel like. If you do that, you'll know that you only have 30 seconds to review the question before your camera starts recording. Then you have three minutes to answer. But don't feel like you have to use all three minutes. Just move on to the next question when you're done. So I know it's a video interview, but just treat it like a regular interview and find a quiet place that's free of distraction. Oh, honey, honey, I'm doing an interview. Dress the part. For bamboo, that means not too formal, but not too cash. You can leave the tie in the closet, but don't leave everything in the closet. And last but not least, have some fun with it. Like I said, a little personality goes a long way. Okay, lovely, thank you. Okay, so I um, hope that video always makes me laugh. I don't know if I you, <laughs> but um, 
So as you can see, some tips on video interviews, um, because these are really popular, especially at the moment because of COVID. But you will find that some employers will continue to use video interview because it is very um, sort of time efficient for employers. However, face to face interviews are probably better for you because you will find that, as I said, it's like an open day university or a college. You actually get to experience um, and see what the employer, what it feels like to be there in that building. So that's why a lot of employees do prefer you to actually come into a face-to-face -face interview so hopefully uh, we all be moving back to face-to-face -to -face. but just so in the meantime uh, where we are still coming out of COVID you will find that some employees will keep to that video interview the other tips which um you know all great tips that they were mentioned in the video um Again, you want to have, so just like I have a bit of a blurry background, um, try and find a quiet room, um, try to, you know, if the dog can stay quiet, that would be great. Sometimes it happens, the dogs bark, that happened to me earlier, to be fair, um, it does happen, employers are not going to sort of give you bad points because, um, you know, your dog started barking in the background, however, if you can find a quiet place, then brilliant. Uh, it also helps you with your concentration. And the other great thing about doing a video interview is that you can keep all your notes at hand. So if you have two screens, for example, like I have here, you could have on one screen all your notes and your CV and your application. And then on the other screen, you can do your interview. So every once in a while, you can glance over your notes. That way you can help you coming up with those answers. Now, with a face to face one, you could still do that same thing again. OK, you can still take your CV and notes with you. OK, no one will, again, penalize you if you take stuff with you. It's actually better because then you will um, you can look down even if you are doing a face to face interview. You can look down sometimes to look at your notes, not constantly. You want to have good eye contact with the with the camera, with the person. But you also want to have a look at those notes, especially if you're unsure about the answer. Um, you can refer back to what you already put in your application um, or looking at job specs sometimes is good um, just to help you out a little bit okay so there's no um, negative about doing that okay uh, okay so these are other tips so in regards to the preparation when it comes to um, preparing for your interview now this is for both sort of video interview and face-to-face -face interview what you want to do is you want to make sure that um, you get plenty of sleep the night before and know again interviews can be very stressful um, and I know that maybe you know you feel really nervous the night before and you probably will even dream about it but try and get as much sleep as you can because looking tired isn't great but also for you mentally you want to be mentally refreshed okay um, I know again you're probably going to laugh at me at this but make sure you wash and brush your hair and sort of um, make sure you put a little bit of effort in your appearance um, attention to detail is really important it shows that you know you uh, have made that little bit of extra effort when it comes to the interview um, so again you want to dress smartly you don't need again like the, the video said you don't need to wear a uh, uh, you know a suit with the tie and the bow tie or you know anything overly fancy but smart casual is probably the best way sort of quite smart um gents you can wear ties if you want to but as i said you don't have to wear sort of a smoking is it called um you know one of those uh, specific suits uh, for a, a night out to, you know, um, a suit is fine. And ladies, you know, a nice blouse uh, with the skirt. Um, if you're doing a video interview, you know, you may want to put quite a bit more effort in, um, you know, your face and your hair. Um, not like I did today. You probably want to put a little bit more effort than I did today. OK, um, just because, again, those are little things that employers notice. You want to have a good impact to that employer. Um, so, again, you want to look the part. If you are travelling to that employer to do a face to face interview, make sure you plan your journey the day before. OK, um, so make sure if you are taking the bus or the train, you work out the times um, and you plan yourself like a little bag with your with your money, your wallet, your documents, everything that you need to take with you. You plan all of that ahead. Uh, if you are traveling with the car, give yourself at least a 10, 15 minutes um, 
sort of leeway because um, sometimes you will get traffic depending where you're going. Or if you go in somewhere rural and you don't really know the roads very well, you may want to take it a little bit easier with the car and not really rush yourself. So make sure you plan your journey ahead um, because then you feel a bit more comfortable than leaving right um you know the exact time of the traveling try and leave a little bit earlier if you can okay if you need any access requirements make sure you mention that to the employer um so then they can prepare that for you that is absolutely fine they will not discriminate against they will make it a little bit you know easier for you to point out which entrance you need to go to and things like that okay so do do prepare for that as well uh, as I said, make sure you take with you your ID, your wallet, everything that you need to take with you. You can take your notes as well, as I said. Um, you want to take instructions as well. So um, when you get shortlisted, you will receive an email with the person that is going to interview you. So you want to make sure that um, you have that name at hand and that telephone number. Sorry. So that if, um, if, for example, you are running late, you can quickly call that person. But also when you go in and you do so sort of you get the reception and you need to see, I don't know, Mr. Johnson, for example, you know that that's the person that you're seeing. So keep that um, with you. OK, make sure you are refreshed mind wise. OK, so do a bit of practice uh, a few days, weeks before your interview, but don't stress. OK, and the other great tip I can give you is smile. OK, so if you always smile, it shows positivity. And again, it just makes everybody feel more comfortable as well, makes the employer feel more comfortable. Again, they are just as nervous as you are. So smiling it just breaks the ice a little bit tell you something okay majority of interviews that i've been to where we ended up laughing and i'm not even joking with you we're laughing we ended up i always ended up getting the job so don't feel oh my god i laughed i shouldn't have laughed no it's okay to laugh it's okay to smile okay as long as it's appropriate <laughs> and um make sure you have some questions ready as well so maybe the day before a couple of days before your interview and you're preparing make sure you write down some questions so then if um when it gets to your turn to asking those questions that employer you feel a little bit more comfortable because you have them ready as well. Now, with questions, make sure that you ask appropriate questions. And by that, I mean, don't just talk about salary and how long your lunch is, OK? I want you to ask appropriate question maybe regarding the role. Or if you can't think of anything, you could ask directly to that employer, oh, what do you like working about here? What do you like about this company? Um, what, you know, um, what's your greatest achievements in, in the company? Um, things like that okay um but the best thing you can do in order to prepare those questions is really do that research so if you research the company uh look at their website look at their career page look at the um, recruitment process but also look at their about page okay that will tell you a little bit more about them it will tell you um what they stand for and whether that's something that you share with them as well okay research them through thoroughly okay um look up at any um um competitors what makes them different from everybody else um and also why you think you know you are suitable so if you share the same ideologies as this company it is worth mentioning as well in the interview because again that will make you stand out and make sure that you really really do some good searching on the social media um and that will again make you stand out quite a lot if you search the social media and for example they've just launched a new product you could talk about that maybe you could ask some questions about that it shows that you are enthusiastic about the role it shows that you enthusiastic about the company and just it just shows that you've done plenty of research okay so it's a really good tip to do look at the social media as i said in the other video if you haven't got a linkedin account yet i would recommend to create one okay and link up to those employees start following those employers because then they will post new um new jobs but also new opportunities that they have um just anything that they share again you can take that with you to the interview okay um so definitely worth researching them thoroughly because they will ask you at the interview what do you know about us 
So you want to make sure that you have a good idea of what they stand for uh, and what you're going to be doing. As I said, you can keep the job spec with you. So not only search about your job and what you're going to be doing in that job role, but also about the company in general and what they do so that you feel, again, more confident in um, in answering that question. I'll be honest, I know it sounds really silly and you probably think, oh, Fred, I knew that one already. Of course, I'm going to research the company. What a silly thing to say. But actually, don't make the same mistake as I did, because I didn't really search the company one time. Right. This was a few years ago um, and I went for the interview and they asked me, oh, what do you know about us? And I felt so embarrassed because I didn't really do that much research on their website. And they said, oh, we launched a new website. Did you see it? And I just started blushing because I never, I didn't search them properly and it felt so embarrassing. Of course, I didn't get the job. So this is what you don't want to do, okay? So make sure you do some really good searching on the company and it will, again, um, it will show you whether it is something that you are interested in doing. Because as I said, it's not just about the employer finding the right candidate. It's also about you and feeling happy working for that particular employer, okay? So, I've got a question. Oh, yeah, a question. question in the chat, and yes. it goes back to um, dress code. Um, Jack is asking, um, does the dress code change depending on whether the interview is virtual or in person? Well, with the virtual interview, I would say it doesn't really change. So you can still wear a nice shirt um, and, you know, a jacket if you want to, uh, even for a virtual one. I can tell you for a fact, Jack, that if you are doing a virtual interview, if you're wearing shorts, no one's going to see it unless you stand up. <laughs> so, but uh, if... Uh, OK, if you feel they're dressing the whole part, this is my advice. OK, when you dress the part and you wear the whole suit, even for a video interview, it will just give you, I don't know, a bit more confidence. That's what I have found, OK, that you feel more confident in doing that video interview because you dress the part. So I would recommend to still dress fully, even shoes on and everything um, to do a video interview, just because it just makes you, gives you that little bit of confidence. When you see yourself all dressed up and ready, um, you can really tackle anything. So that's my advice. But of course, if you're uh, wearing shorts underneath, no one's really going to see that to be fair. But for a face to face interview, yes, you will need to. Now, the other thing about dress code that I would recommend is that always try to wear you know, uh, smart clothing, okay? Even if you are going for a job at a building site, okay? It doesn't matter what you decide to do. When you are going for an interview, you really want to show your best assets by yourself and you really want to sell yourself, promoting yourself. And another good way is also a visual impact that you have on that employer. So if you show up in jeans or, you know, you know, um, smart, um, sorry, sports, um, bottoms or you know a jacket with a hoodie it just doesn't look very professional so it doesn't matter what you do even if that particular job requires you to wear a uniform okay it doesn't matter it just um for that particular occasion they want you to dress the part okay so that's my recommendation with that one do we have any other questions not at the moment fred OK, not the moment. Now, I do have a, this other video, but I'll be honest with you guys, it is about five minutes. It's a little bit long. So what we'll do is I will skip it, but um, I do have the YouTube link. So what I can do is I can send right bear with me. I can put that in the chat. Right bear with me. I'm going to see if I can copy it. Oh, it's not letting me copy. What I'll do is at the end of this, I'll copy the link and I'll put it in the chat. And then if you want to watch it in your own time, please feel free. As I said, it's a little bit long. And if I will show you this, it's going to be too repetitive in what I'm about to say. So I'm going to cover everything anyway that this video covers. But again, if you want to watch it in your own time, please feel free to. OK. So I'm going to skip this bit. So these are some of the typical questions that you get. So see, these are some of the examples of the questions that you get. Um, so again, that will pop up always. What research have you done? What do you know about a company? Again, we go back to it's so important that you research the company because you will get asked that without a fail. You will be asked that question. So it's important that you are aware. OK, 
why do you want to apply for this particular apprenticeship or this role? And this is where the job spec comes in and show your enthusiasm and your interest. So again, try and pick up some of these keywords we looked at earlier in the job spec, which will make you stand out and back them up with some really good examples. Um, why should we hire you? This is a great question to really sell yourself there. So again, we looked at your strengths earlier. So think about what strengths do you have? OK, and why you're suitable for that particular role. So really, again, show off all of your great skills. Don't feel that you're boasting, OK, because what you are doing, you are really selling yourself here. So have that confidence to really say, oh, yes, I can do this and I can do this and I can do this. And the reason why I can do all these things is because I have this experience and that tran those transferable skills and I've been doing this hobby and I've been doing this work. So really try and um, group everything that you're really good at and really show off in that kind of sense um, all your great skills. OK, so you really want to sell yourself. Of course, you don't want to be overly confident. There's a difference. So there's a little bit of a fine line there between being confident and overly confident. Sometimes when you are overly confident, it shows that you don't care. So what you want to do is really, as I said earlier with the application, is link up those um, skills that you have to the job. So you can phrase it as, I think I would be a suitable candidate for this role because I have these particular skills which you are looking for and I have these I have acquired these skills from previous employment from education from college okay so you can really do it that way um so that's a really good way of doing it so there is a little bit of a fine line and I'm sure you can feel when you're crossing that line but I'm sure everybody will be fine with that one and um, so describe your strengths again and any um examples so sometimes they will ask you specific questions so give us an example of a time where you had to solve a difficult situation or um give me an example um about uh, where you so work under pressure or where you have to work as a team so there's a quite um th there's some of them um which which are some of the popular questions that you get um so again what you want to do before your interview is really prepare those answers so again we looked at earlier coming up with some great keywords and examples and um and you can do the same with an interview. So again, you can take those notes with you. So try and think of some examples beforehand. So again, look back at that job specification, look at those keywords and try and think of some examples. OK, but we'll go in more detail in the next slide about that one. OK, so coming up with examples is a really, really good way to really um, show off uh, in the sense of you can really boast yourself in um, in proving that you have those skills. OK, um, again, they will ask you some specific questions, some technical questions, so not just um, generic questions, but also um, depending what you're applying for, of course. But if, say, for example, you um, are applying for an engineering job, they may ask you for some technical questions. Um, they may ask you for scenario questions. So what would you do if you were in this particular situation yeah so you want to try and and come up with some good answers and some good examples okay um and another great one which is my favorite is tell me about your greatest achievement okay that is my favorite question so what we're going to do now is i would like all of you if you can to type in in the chat your greatest achievement so anything that you've done that you're quite proud of and i want to hear a little bit from you so tell me what is your greatest achievement because again you um you can really show show off how how amazing skills that you have um greatest achievement is my favorite question so i would like to hear if some of you if some of you are feeling brave to put that in the chat I hope somebody's typing. <laughs> so your greatest achievement, as I said, it could be anything, something that you've done at work, something that you've done at college, something that you've done outside completely. So um, I, I think, um, was it Jack that plays a musical instrument? So I remember that from the last session. 
that is a great achievement. Okay, so being fluent, uh, um, uh, sorry, being proficient at playing a musical instrument, that is an achievement. If you won anything like a, a champion, or even if you got to a certain level, uh, that is an achievement itself. It could be anything. Anybody? There's, yeah, there's yeah, loads there's coming loads up in the up chat, chat now. now. Oh, brilliant. Please share it with me. I love so to hear got it. Becoming the chairman of Stone Market Young Farmers. Oh, wow. That's Volunteering so for a charity in Africa. Wow. Um, passing my grade five clarinet. Oh, wow. Even though I was really nervous. Um, oh, reaching yes. the national finals in table tennis. Oh, my God. Um, producing a magazine for students which showcased their career journey. Oh, wow. Um, Oh, completing wow. completing a 10 mile walk to raise money for my high school fund oh my god getting the lead role in a play oh wow there's That's some fantastic things in here amazing. oh my god you guys i knew you were a really good group but you are really amazing i want you to really sh sort of say these things okay to the employer don't feel that um oh my god i'm gonna be showing off you know you are selling yourself here and i have uh, those things that you've just read out loud. I haven't even done one of those things. I'm a little bit older than you, I can tell you. Those things are amazing, okay? All of you are all amazing in your own way, okay? And you all have different set of skills. You all are good at something. And um, as I said, you're all good at different things. And some of you have achieved, most of you have achieved some amazing things. So really, it shows that you are very passionate and you have some amazing skills. So please don't feel frightened to really say those things in your interview because it will land you the job. Um, and you've got nothing to lose when you get to the stage of the interview. Um, you know, it is really your chance to show off and how amazing you are. Um, so really do try and sell yourself as best as you can. I know it can be very nerve wracking to try and sell yourself, but it, it would really, it would really be good because especially you guys you're an amazing group i have to say really good really good now um has anybody i don't know if any of you have been for an interview before now these are some of the typical questions do you know of any other questions can you think of any other questions that um you may get from an employer and teachers please feel free to jump in if you if you can think of any other questions as well Fred, one of the probably the one of the funniest ones I had um, was if I could, um, if I was a, an animal, what animal would I be? Thanks. And and I was like, well, why is the employer asking me this? But then I realised that they were then starting to get me to think about um, the personality of that particular animal and what is what um, attributes that I had similar. So that was a really strange one. Um, yes. I think I remember saying, I think I said I was a tiger. <laughs> oh, wow, wow, well, I know you're a tiger. <laughs> and and um, I think I, I do remember saying something about the fact that, um, you know, that my, like me, my stripes were quite outstanding. And I was like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I said that. But oh, it really did get me to think about it. And it was one of those ones where they, they put me on the spot. But I think sometimes you do get a question that puts you on the spot, don't you? Oh, definitely. I was just going to say that. Sometimes they'll ask you things like, oh, if you were a car, what car would you be? Oh, if you were a superhero, I had that one before. If you were a superhero, what superhero would you be? It's so random. It's got nothing actually to do with the job. It is just to see how quickly you can think on the spot. It's just to catch you off guard. Um, so it's just to get you sort of that quick thinking and coming up with an answer very quickly. Um, so it's just to test you working under pressure and um, your quick responses, really. Um, so, yeah, it's a really funny one is there you do get some of those that those are good um anybody else had any other questions um that... yeah Alison said what but what can you do if you really can't think of an answer to a question like something like that where you like where something like that might throw you a little bit or because you're quite nervous and you can't think of what to say have you got any advice around that Fred okay so what you can do is and this is a a, a tip um that I picked up okay what you can do is to give yourself a few more extra time uh, to think about an answer. So if they ask you a question, you just repeat that question. So if you say, if they say, oh, what animal would you be? What animal would I be? Um, 
and then you answer okay so you can give yourself a few seconds okay there's nothing wrong with that and you can do that by also reiterating the question or you can take a few more seconds by asking them oh sorry i didn't quite understand would you mind repeating that's okay too i mean don't do it to every single question okay but if you are really thinking um that you're struggling to think of an answer um you can ask them to repeat the question or just repeat the question yourself you can take a few seconds okay you don't have to answer everything straight away okay so if you take a few seconds and then answer that's okay as well um i'm just trying to think don't um and ah too much which is what i'm doing right now you see because it doesn't look very good but um the other thing i guess you could do to try and you know you you can be honest and say i'm i'm not too sure to be honest um you you want to try and answer as many questions as you can but of course if you don't know the answer you can be honest and say i'm so sorry but actually i don't know the answer to this one it is what it is um but if you can try to answer all the questions as best as you can even if you just try even if you get it wrong but at least you've tried to answer this that question appropriately then um at least you tried you know um, rather than saying i don't know straight away so those are just a few tips i hope that helps yeah that's a that's really helpful fred um jack mentions um you know it, is there any way to prepare for random questions um I think, Jack, my answer around that would be it's just a lot of those random questions are trying to get you to think about your own qualities and attributes. Yeah. And so, like, if you can try and think what your top attributes are um, that you want to, you know, those buzzwords again that you can put forward to an employer, um, then you can normally answer that random question. Yes. Yeah, you can't really prepare for those types of questions. Um, I was just thinking another way to, to give yourself a few extra seconds to think is you will always have a glass of water. So take a sip of water while you're thinking. So before answering, just take a sip of water because, of course, you're going to be nervous. Your mouth is going to be dry. So, you know, quick replenish and then you can answer. That will give you a few extra seconds as well. But don't worry, you won't be marked down on your answer if, you know, they ask you, what superhero would you be? You're not going to get the job because you say Superman instead of Spider-Man. You see what I mean? That's that's not what it's about. It's really just to catch you off guard. Apologies again about my dog. This time it's not the first one. It's probably somebody just walking past. <laughs> so what you can do to prepare for those questions, for those example questions, is using the STAR model. I don't know if some of you have come across this before, but this is the best way to come up with some uh, examples to really um, back up your um, responses, okay? So the STAR model is a technique that is used by employers as well. Um, they come, you know, it's been um, proven that it works really well. So um, use it, please. Um, so STAR stands for Situation, Task, Action and Result. So when you are thinking of a buzzword, which we looked at earlier, okay, think about an example. And the best thing to do when you're thinking about an example is really creating a bit of a scene. Okay, so when you are talking to the employer and they ask you, oh, give us an example where you were under pressure. You think about a situation, yeah, and you describe that situation. So what was going on? Okay, then the task, what were you doing? What was going on? Um, what task did you have to complete? What was the issue? So what happened that caused the problem? And then action, what did you do in order to resolve it? And then the result, what happened at the end? So I'll give you an actual example that a student gave to me. And in the meantime, while I explain that, feel free to maybe type in the chat any examples that you have of a situation um, of working maybe under pressure, working as a team. So I had a, a student one time saying to me that they used to work at a restaurant and it was very busy and the managers and everyone was very busy. There was a lot of people and they saw that on the floor there was um, uh, somebody spilled some water on the floor. So he recognized that as a potential hazard, potential health and safety hazard, um, that somebody could slip, especially how busy it was. So in that moment of time, he stopped what he was doing and he quickly went to get uh, a cloth to dry it up. And um, result that he, he then reported to the manager to let him know that what happened. And the manager was very happy with him and nobody got hurt. So 
I know it sounds like a very simple thing, but it, it just shows the, so the situation, the task, the action and what happened and what what was the result at the end. So it's a good way to really, again, go back to those buzzwords and come up with the really good examples, which will then make you stand out and make you uh, more memorable to that employer so that they can remember you a little bit more. So the star model is a great way to, to do that. Does anybody have any examples that they would like to share? Maybe they've done during teamwork uh, or working under pressure um, or communication skills. So any of those buzzwords that we looked at earlier, would anybody have any star examples that they would like to share with us? It's gone a bit quiet for it. I think they're all thinking about it at the moment. Yeah, that takes a little bit of time to be fair because it's quite a long. Um, so it's a bit like a story, I would say, because you are kind of describing the situation uh, and then what were you doing, what happened and what was the result? So, you know, it's quite a, a bigger task. Um, I can tell you another story. So you were here earlier when I told you the booking.com story. I'll tell you another booking.com story because they, they, you know, they, they're going to sue me because of the amount of stories I'm talking about them. <laughs> Whoops. But anyway, um, so one time, right, I'll tell you a story. I was working at booking.com again, and um, it was during the European Cup. And this was a, it was, a, it was very busy. Um, I can't remember what year it was, but it was, quite a long time ago. It wasn't the last one. It wasn't the one before. It was probably the one before then. Shows how old I am, right? So it was quite some time ago. And uh, what happened was um, the, the, a lot of, so a big um, hotel, yeah, what they did was they got, a, they hired, they bought a, like a big field and they put loads of tents in this field. OK, so this is what happened. They got all these tents and they were um, renting out these tents for the night like you would in a hotel. So people were booking um, these tents and they um, were meant to stay overnight. What happened was. There was no such thing. So when people turned up, there were no tents. OK, that field did not exist. Of course, the people that you know set this up eventually got found and they got arrested because it's fraudulent. But yeah, what happened was myself and other team members, we all had to call through every single person that booked uh, for uh, that particular tent, for all those tents. And we had to re um, find them new accommodation, which was a nightmare because, of course, you can imagine it was the European Cup and everything was fully booked so it was a complete chaos uh, but we all worked together we did stay over a little bit later than we were supposed to however everybody was relocated and they had somewhere to sleep that night it was quite funny because actually I still remember I called somebody who was Irish and they were I remember that they were Irish I don't know why but they were um, watching the football as we were talking on the phone because I could hear all the noise in the background it was brilliant but at the same time it was very scary. So there's another story there for you about booking.com. It is a great, I'm sure it's a great company, but it's just like, you know, there are some funny stories that I lived through because of them. But there you go. So it shows that I had, you know, again, good customer service. There you go. Working under pressure because it was very difficult, that situation. But looking back, it was, I was, I'm actually quite happy that I did that because uh, it was definitely an experience, I tell you. So there you go. Anybody can come up with any stories like that or any stories that they would like to share? No, that's that was a really good um, star star um, uh, example there. Um, uh, Jack um, has just popped in the chat. Um, so verbal communication, um, he's put showing prospective students around school, um, discussing yeah. with parents and students what it's like to be a student at the school. Um, yep. and allowing the prospective new student to feel at ease about starting secondary school in the new year. Right. Um, Good. And I'm yep. guessing the result of that, Jack, was um, that they came to the school that you were attending. So that yeah. would that would cover that whole star model, wouldn't it? No, exactly, exactly. That's really good. So really describing it into a trying to create a picture in a way for the employer. Um, so Jack, yeah, you definitely, you know, say that you've you've done that, uh, you've done those evenings and you walk the students around the school and you really promoted all the good um, 
about the school, you you know, you've been very honest with the students and the parents and you answered any questions um, to make them feel very comfortable. So that that's great, you know, and the result was that more students came um, at your college. So that's really great. So well done. So you kind of get the idea of the sound model. Again, if you want to take a quick picture of the sound model, do that um, or we, we can send you the this particular slide so you can use it for your future. OK, but yeah, do bear that one in mind it is a good one to use. So a few other quick tips and information. So I know I said that it was going to be less than an hour, but I think we may make it an hour. So uh, rehearse your star examples beforehand so you can write them down. As I said, you can make notes and you can take them with you or you can rehearse them in your head or even rehearse with somebody, a family member or a friend, and you can uh, get them to ask you questions so you feel a bit more confident in answering those particular questions. You know, as you said earlier, Jack, how do you prepare for certain questions? Maybe you can do that by practicing with somebody. The more you practice, the more of these you do, the more confident you feel. Make sure you arrive on time or early. Don't be late, OK? Uh, make sure um, you try to give a good first impression. So if you are having a face to face and we are allowed to shake hands once again, then uh, a nice firm handshake goes a long way, OK? Um, but of course, at the moment, we can't do that. But again, maybe doing other things to try and give yourself a good impression by having um, sort of looking good with your hair done and everything that that's always good um, appearance as well. Um, if you need to think of your answer, you are allowed to pause a little bit. OK, I don't feel that you have to answer everything straight away. Uh, there's no rush. Relax, take a deep breath, take a drink of water if you need to and then answer those questions. OK, try to stay focused. But if you get lost in the question, sometimes employers may explain something and then follow up with the question. Um, so if that confuses you again, you can ask them to repeat the questions or rephrase the question. That's absolutely fine. OK, um, you can prepare to anticipate some of the um, questions and answers as well to see if you can score well. So again, the best thing you can do to do that is by using those examples and those keywords. OK. So really, really make good use of those for both your application and interviews. They go a long way. OK, and um, try to stop to avoid waffling on too much. So try and be concise and clear. Eye contact is great. So as the gentleman in the video said, you know, if you are doing a video interview, you don't have to stare at the camera. You can look away. Uh, the same thing goes for a face to face interview. Try to give a positive eye contact. Try to maintain an eye contact. But of course, if you sometimes look away, that's OK, too. OK, don't feel like you have to constantly stare at them. <laughs> OK. So a few other tips. So, oh no, that's it. So if that's it for the tips. Uh, what happens after the interview? So at the end of your interview, they will usually, the employer will ask you, uh, sorry, they will tell you, um, you know, when they'll be in touch. If they don't tell you, then you can ask that question. So when when will I hear from you? That's an absolutely acceptable question, okay? Um, so um, they will usually take uh, a few days or a week to decide and get back to you, depending on how many more candidates are interviewing, okay? But they usually they will let you know it and whether they're gonna call you or email you. Um, they will have like a scoring, uh, as well. So it will be down to them how they score you uh, depending on your answer. And then that way they will decide who the successful candidate is. Of course, give your best shot. As I said, try and give those answers as best as you can to and use as many examples as you can to really show off all your skills. OK, that's all you can do. Once you've done that, that's it. You can't really do much else. Um, however, um, they usually follow up with, uh, as I said, a call or an email to tell you whether you've been successful or whether you haven't. If you don't hear from them um, for longer than a week, I would say, um, you are allowed to send them an email just to chase them and just ask them, where am I in the recruitment? Um, so I had an interview recently. Um, I just wanted to know the progress of that interview. Um, and then, you know, just they will get back to you and let you know. Usually you don't need to do that. But if you see that it's been a long time and they haven't replied to you after the interview, you can chase them up. OK, of course, if you don't get that particular job or that particular apprenticeship okay and you're not the suitable candidate that's okay um my mum always says one window closes a door opens so don't worry keep your chin up 
keep applying, okay? There will be lots of opportunities available. So don't put all your eggs in one basket and don't feel let down if you don't get that particular job. You may have to do a few before you land the perfect one. Um, and if um, you are not successful, again, you can ask the employer to give you a bit of feedback. So it could just be that they find somebody who has um, different skills from you, which is more suitable in that kind of sense, which, you know, it's OK. Um, but usually they tend to be quite positive on the feedback as well. But you can ask for any clarification or any further instructions, which will then help you with your next interview as well. Um, you can do that if you want to. Usually um, they they tend to sort of keep it quite simple um, with their answers, but yeah, you can ask for further feedback as well. But as I said, if you don't feel negative about it, if you don't get it, we all went through lots of interviews in our lives and you know, I don't know how many I've done. I probably lost count. I don't know about you, uh, Miss, how many you've done, but probably a few. Um, people tend to change jobs a lot um, and you're young, so you will go through a lot of interviews and you want to change careers, maybe, you know, throughout your life. Um, you may do one thing, then you do another one. That's OK. Um, so you may not have all those particular skills, but you can constantly build as time goes on. Sorry, was there a question? No, I don't think so, Fred, but I do really agree with you with that. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, what what your age is. You know, you do have to prepare for every interview that you go for. Yes. Um, and, you know, it uh, it might be that you have to, um, you know, like you said, go through quite a few processes um, to get the right job. Exactly. Um, but you learn from each and every one of them and you get better every time, don't you? No, definitely, definitely. That's how it is. You become more confident, even if it's just about confidence, you will build that as you go on and you do more interviews. So go for that interview, even if you, for example, have another job lined up, but they offer you an interview, go for it. Even if it's just for a practice, at least, you know, you've um, you're given yourself all the chances available and I just think it's a really good way, an interview, I know it's it's scary, I know you think, oh my God, it's really scary, Fred, why are you putting me through this? But actually, it will just build your confidence, it really will. So that's pretty much everything that we covered about interviews. So we looked at how to prepare for an interview, so what you do beforehand, interview questions, how to come up with those answers, look at your job spec to come up with those answers, look at that star model as well to help you, um, more hints and tips and what happens after your interview. Again, I can't stress enough, make sure you do plenty of research and look at those uh, posts on the company website, uh, social media, talk to family and friends. You can practice a lot with family and friends as well um, when it comes to interviews. So again, if you feel nervous, do an interview in front of a friend, imagine. Uh, actually, sometimes I feel more nervous about presenting in front of family than I do to other people that I don't really know, but that's just me. I don't know about you guys. Um, and there's also lots of resources on the Amazing Apprenticeship website. Again, if you want to have a look at those resources, as we talked about earlier, there's lots of interactive stuff on there. Um, so you can have a look and um, and just, you know, um, there's lots of great employers. They will give you tips as well about interviews and um, the recruitment process, okay? And of course, here are the um, handles. If you need any further support, I am here. You can go on the National Friendship Service website or onto the AIM Group website, and that's where I am. And you will find me. And if you need any further support, speak to your careers team, and they can get me back in. I'll be more than happy to help any of you. But that's pretty much it for me. Um, we are just in time, I think. So yeah, that's wonderful, ready? Fred. Yeah, thank you. Um, no, Jack has said, um, just could we possibly send out the star model via email? Um, Jack will do that for you after this meeting so that you've got that to start preparing for any future interviews. And just to remind everybody that the recording and also um, the PowerPoint from today will go on our website um, a little bit later on. We might not be able to get it on there directly before half term, but we will do it for after half term. Definitely. All right, but thank you so much, Fred. No um, any any other questions at all for Fred before we go? Thank you so much, everyone, for joining in again, uh, listening and participating and giving me lots of great achievements. That really made me so proud to hear all of those great achievements. Well done, all of you. 
lots of messages and thanks there, Fred. So yes. thanks again. Thank you. Thank you so much.